many things happening in the medical world right now. We thought it was a good time to have our doctor panel come in. Joining us now are doctors Jill Hechtman, Srini Iyengar, Carmela Sebastian, and Adam Shiner. Good to have you all here. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Let's start with the Zika virus, which is now here in the U.S. Florida Governor Rick Scott has declared a health emergency in four counties. And it's not just mosquitoes that can spread this. Sexual contact and possibly blood transfusions as well. And if a pregnant woman contracts the disease, it can cause severe birth defects. Some Latin American countries are urging women not to get pregnant for two years. Could Zika spread here quickly? Dr. Jill, you're the OBGYN. It's pretty scary, I'll tell you that. But right now, we have no confirmed cases of Zika virus coming from a mosquito that lives in America, right? right? All of the cases that have happened in our counties and mm -hmm. elsewhere mm -hmm. are because someone traveled to one of the affected countries and then come back. So at the moment, I would say I'm not panicking yet, but I'd like to calm everybody's nerves, but realize I wouldn't travel up to any of these countries on the list. Mm -hmm. I would be careful with your partners if they are traveling elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I love what the Red Cross is doing by bringing in, you know, telling people if you've traveled to one of these countries, you can't donate blood for 28 days. That's awesome. So I think we're on top of it. What mm -hmm. about telling women they can't get pregnant, though, for two years? Is that's that even not realistic? Practical. No, I mean, it's, it's, I understand where it's coming from, but we all know, all of us know that mm -hmm. that's not at all no, practical. No, I, I think that, you know, really it's not practical that someone would be, not be pregnant for two years. And what would that do to a society if you didn't have children going through the system for two years? That would really wreck a society. I think in that country, even to say maybe wait till the, wa the rainy season is over, that might be more pragmatic. In, or if, let's work on mosquito yeah. problems, wear long yeah. clothing, exactly. cover like, yourself with DEET, right. those types of things to help prevent the spread of the infection as opposed to don't get pregnant. Yeah. Right. And, and birth control. And birth control. Mm -hmm. What about a vaccine? Can these, I mean, they keep talking about them coming up with a vaccine. Can a vaccine be come up with that quickly for something like no, this? Most likely not. That's the thing is that we're looking at the, the Hail Mary approach to it by saying vaccines will get everyone cured by mm -hmm. this. I think common sense for our mm -hmm. perspective. Unfortunately, what's going on in Brazil, their government's taking care of it. But from our perspective, I think what Jill just mentioned, long clothing, mosquito right. repellent, try to have common sense about it. Okay, you know. clear standing water, Get don't, it out don't hang hand, around garbage, yards. yes, exactly. Right. Don't travel. Right. Yes. As they follow what the CDC, says, CDC was saying was that don't go to areas where it's rampant. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I, had a, a I actually consensus. had a trip planned to Panama. And now I'm thinking, mm -hmm. no, we're not, I'm not going. Are you trying to get pregnant? No, but, uh, it, it, but even if you're not <laughs> pregnant, um, it's actually I mean, it not really worrisome if you're not pregnant. No, so that's the one that's thing. That's not true. As far as well, I saw there, a report the other day of a guy who had Zika virus and he was paralyzed. Like the Guillain Barre. That's, Guillain that's yeah. unusual, but yes, yeah, some mm -hmm. people will have that too. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. But the virus itself is self-limiting. It's mild. You might like not even flu. know you even yeah. have it. It feels like the right. flu. Right. And so that in and of itself is not a reason not to travel if you're not becoming pregnant. This, the travel advisory is specifically for women mm -hmm. who are pregnant or mm -hmm. trying to become okay. pregnant. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on. Britain's fertility regulator has approved a scientist's request to edit the human genetic code mm -hmm. in an effort to fight inherited diseases. But critics fear the new technique crosses too many ethical boundaries. Mm -hmm. Scientist Kathy Nyakin is trying to understand the genes that human embryos need to develop successfully. Scientists say genetic editing techniques could one day lead to treatments for conditions like HIV, which causes AIDS, and inherited diseases like muscular dystrophy and sickle cell disease. Mm -hmm. Critics say, do not mess with nature. Right, so we were talking about this, mm -hmm. and interestingly, what the scientist is really doing is trying to help people with infertility. They're not trying to take these embryos and put it into a woman to conceive. So there is some safety there. You know, where I trained in medical school, University of Pennsylvania, interestingly, there was um, a blinding eye condition called uh, Labor's congenital amaurosis, and it was a condition that, for all millennia, these young people would go blind. Well, they actually did some something similar to this technique, where they took a gene that was missing and they put into a virus and infected the eye of these people who had this this condition, mm -hmm. and they restored sight. And this is amazing. So there's potential for this to be very beneficial in the future, but there, we have to put real strict regulations so it doesn't go into the genetic code, so it's not goes into something that's hurt, that can be um, passed along generations. Like smarter babies. Exactly. Right. 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 That's what people exactly. are afraid of, designer babies. Right. Right. That's right. exactly it. It's a ethical dilemma because we're trying to help, and the road to hell is usually paved with good intentions. Mm -hmm. We're trying to do the best for eliminating disease, mm -hmm. but what's the slippery slope from disease to making something better that isn't diseased? You okay. know? And that's right. what our concern is right now. 
All right. So you're okay with this? But ethical committees. We yeah. need to have the proper committee set up. Regulation. Right. Regulation. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Moving on. No offense, docs, but when it comes to uh, talking to patients, sometimes you can be a little insensitive. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> when it comes to breaking bad news, even seasoned doctors often fail to handle it as well as they may have hoped. Mm -hmm. Starting this month, Medicare began reimbursing doctors for end-of-life conversations with patients mm -hmm. in which doctors gauge the patient's preferences for aggressive, life-saving treatments and palliative mm -hmm. care. Mm -hmm. Do you think this is a good idea and do you think this is necessary as doctors? Absolutely necessary and fabulous because most of us, and I will say, I'm raising my hand, we're not trained to deal with the end of life, you know, treat, 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 mm -hmm. um, until there's possibly no alternative. And some people are saying, you know, that's just not what I want. I have a plan and there's, there's decisions I want to make and life I want to live. So maybe I don't want that final chemotherapy um, that may do nothing to help me. So I think it's very, very important. I think training the physicians more, um, mm -hmm. more yeah. emotional intelligence Mm -hmm. as well yeah. as regular book smarts. Right. Better bedside manner, for sure. And Sydney, it's that. like we're so, like like Carm just mentioned, we're so bent on quantity of life, but mm -hmm. not quality. Right. You know? yeah. So what are we doing a lot of times with our procedures, with our mm -hmm. medications? We're trying to say, you're going to live longer, but if the patient is miserable, we should think about that and say, listen, maybe the quantity of life should be more important at this point. Well, and I'll say, actually, so there was actually in, in a couple of years ago in, your, in general medicine, they actually looked at palliative care, and actually mm -hmm. people who have that sort of emotional support, they actually live a little bit longer. Yeah. And definitely better. And I don't know about you guys, but in my medical school, we didn't, we didn't, we weren't taught how to talk to patients about mm -hmm. palliative care. We learned by watching our, you know, professors do right. it. Right. And so I think having specific courses during residencies would Wonderful. help doctors tremendously. Definitely, right. Absolutely. 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 I'm curious, as a cardiologist, I'm sure you've had to have some very difficult conversations. I'm sure you all have had mm -hmm. difficult conversations with your patients. But mm -hmm. when you have to tell somebody mm -hmm. that the end is coming, and maybe you know they have a limited time, do you tell them? How do you tell them? Do you make sure they the, have somebody this, with them? Absolutely. Cindy, this is not a easy 10-second blurb that I can tell you. This, right. this is something that you have to be emotional and empathetic mm -hmm. with the patient and the patient's family. It's mm -hmm. not being sympathetic, but rather with them. You're feeling it with them and mm -hmm. sitting down and saying, listen, at the end of the situation or what's going on right now, we can only do so much medically. We can only treat you as aggressively as you would like us to do, but right. we're mm -hmm. not going to add quality to the situation, to your life. And that's mm -hmm. important. You have to let the patient know that because they will always hold on to the last glimmer of hope, like mm -hmm. cancer patients right. as well. Right. If you can actually <clears throat> tell a patient and actually communicate with them that what the best situation is to get out of the pain, the shortness of breath, whatever mm -hmm. is occurring, maybe it's morphine mm -hmm. and right. not a stent mm -hmm. and not yeah. a chemotherapy and, regimen. And, and then I think the other important thing is you have to shut up. Mm -hmm. After listen. you say all that, you have to listen to them, yeah. and you have to, and it's very uncomfortable. People don't like that. Right. Uh, the the quiet. You do. You need to do that. That makes a lot of sense. Good listening, and, and you guys were all wonderful. So we'll, well, thank we'll, you. We'll, <laughs> you're, all very, you're all so kind. Thank you all very much for coming in today. We'll be right thank back you. with more daytime. So don't go away. Thank you.